There are people using the Steam Community Workshop right now making up to $500,000 per year. These are game developers who are making more through the workshop than their day jobs. This is, I'm Michael Portier and I'm a developer at Valve and I'm here to tell you about the Valve Steam Community Workshop. So we're going to go over today the need for the workshop, what our competitors have out there, and also the advantages the workshop has for all its users. The reason we're here today is we here at Valve want more submissions from our user base, you all, the community. And before we move on, no, please hold your questions till the end of the presentation. Moving along, I'll start off with the need for the Steam Community Workshop with a quote. To be really concrete, 10 times as much content comes from the user base as from us. That's from Gabe Mule, the CEO and founder of Valve. And that was at CES where he gave a presentation talking about how much content is being produced by the users of Steam as opposed to the game developers and us at Valve themselves. And this uh, sheer amount of content leads to the other need for the workshop is a means of publication for all these uh, mods, maps, items being created. So workshop statistics shows that over one million submissions have been made already. Now to talk about our competitors. So Valve, uh, is listed as a competitor against Nintendo, Sony, Microsoft, all the big names, and also smaller other companies with their own platforms of distribution for video games, Electronic Arts, Origin, and Desura. But none of them really have anything that allows its users to submit an item they've created for a game and also like have it officially recognized or make profit off of it. Nintendo has the Miiverse, which you can use tools given to you to submit, make submissions, but that's really not you making something yourself and submitting it for an existing game already. Sony's really got nothing, Microsoft's got nothing, Electronics Arts Origin, our direct competitor to our online uh, digital distribution, Steam, has really nothing. They don't have a community workshop, and Desura also has nothing. Another interesting thing about uh, the Valve Steam Community Workshop is we allow you to monetize for certain games that have microtransactions built into them. If you submit a model or a texture or something and it gets in the game. We allow for a 25% takeaway on you once we get an item submitted and it goes through and qualifies to get into the game. And that doesn't sound like a big amount, but the profits do add up. This is like for each individual purchase of the item as opposed to a commission for the rights to your item. So now that I've talked about our competitors, I want to talk about why we have the advantage. So as I mentioned earlier, the monetization, in a interview with several of the modelers that have made submissions to the Steam Community Workshop, uh, PC Gamer talked to Will Sagerman and he said that last tax year Valve paid him $88,000 for one of his items that got in. Valve paid over $10 million for digital goods last year to a community of only 661 creators, generating sizable sums for many of them. These are people going through the workshop, submitting their own custom models, it gets in the game, they get a 25% uh, takeaway on the total like profit of selling the item, and they're just making money. <clears throat> and another advantage of the Steam Community Workshop is the exposure and the accessibility that it has. Um, according to a workshop to statistic, 12 million gamers have downloaded an average of 57 items from the workshop. When you submit an item to the workshop, it's an interface through Steam, which is our digital distribution for licenses, games, and other software. And when a game signs up with workshop, it gets its own workshop page where users can go and have their own individual pages and upload their submissions for review and for just all sorts of other useful uh, things. 
you get listed in the workshop, so there's exposure when the person loads up that, like, goes to their Steam, they open up their games, and they click on the game. Before they play it, it'll say what's trending in the workshop, and it'll show your item there. There's discussions that allow for input from the community, and there's also formatting. We have software that you can run your model through to see if, like, the polygon count is correct and just if it'll qualify for, uh, the game to see if it's a good model, if you've done the correct uh, specification so that it'll fit into the game. Uh, so, in conclusion, today we talked about the need for the workshop, how there are uh, many people just making all this content out there, just tons of people making models, mods, maps, things they love for the games they play, and we talked about how uh, the Steam Community Workshop provides a means of publication for that. Talk about how our competition really doesn't have anything similar that allows you to upload something to an existing game that you yourself made. And we also talked about the profit exposure that our Steam Community Workshop offers. It lets you build a portfolio of sorts. You get also money if you get into the right game. There's multiple games that we here at Valve have listed with microtransactions built into them, such as TF2, CSGO, Dota 2, and just various others that allow for you to make profit. So I want to thank you all for coming here today and listening to my presentation. We have computers here in the room, and we can walk you through the Steam Community Workshop submission process. We can show you examples of existing uh, workshop items. Our staff will be happy to walk you through the whole process. And uh, now that I've given you the presentation, I can open the floor to any questions.